Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, owns heaven. He owns heaven. Okay, there is a lot of misinformation floating around out in the public. There are a lot of lies and a lot of myths out there. One of them is that everyone goes to heaven, or if you've done more good deeds than evil deeds, then you go to heaven. Well, we need to scratch that and start with the basic facts. Is heaven real? Yes. And who owns it? Who owns it? That will tell us a lot about it. So Jesus Christ owns heaven. And so that is why you must know him to get in. It's like if someone had an invitation only party and it was at a big mansion and there were security guards and everything, you had to have that invitation to get in. See, it's like kind of like that. But I want to talk about some of these uh, facts and some of these realities because it's very important to understand that he owns heaven. It is his heaven. It's his. So Jesus Christ owns heaven in Revelation 21, 22 through 25. It says, But I saw no temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb of God are its temple. They are the focus and the height of heaven. Verse 23, And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, because the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its lamp. So the Heavenly Father and the Son of God, the Lamb of God, are the light and the lamp of heaven. Verse 24, By its light the nations will walk, and into it the kings of the earth will bring their glory. 25. Its gates will never be shut at the end of the day because there will be no night there. There's no night there. It is always light because the Heavenly Father is the Father of lights and Jesus Christ is the light of heaven, and the lamp of heaven. So you need to realize that. Not just all of you normal subscribers, but other people that pass upon this um, this video if you have heard the rumor that everyone goes to heaven or that heaven is just this amorphous ethereal place and everybody goes there it's not true it is owned by Jesus Christ he owns it he rules it it's all his okay so he owns heaven he rules heaven we see that Jesus Christ is the light of heaven and the lamp of heaven in John 14 6 Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, so he's saying, I am the way to heaven. And then in John 10, 9, he says, I am the door. I am the door. If you want to go to heaven, Jesus owns heaven. You need to go to him and through him to get there. All right, that's why he calls the road to heaven a narrow, straight and narrow road. Okay, let's look at some things that might be relevant here. If you think you want to go to heaven, you need to get into these kind of ideas here and pursue him and tell him that you want a relationship with him and tell him to, um, that, that you want to be saved. Ask him to cleanse you. Tell him you're giving him your life and declare that his will be done in your life agree with him on that. So you can pray to him and initiate this process, but these are some things you're going to want to move toward. Matthew 7, 23. So these are some questions you can ask yourself. Number one, do you know the Lord relationally? Like for example, if you were in a, at a cocktail party and you were just talking with some people and Jesus Christ walked in the room, when he first saw you, what would he say? Would he reach out and shake your hand and say, Hey, Steve or Mary or Joe, how's it going? Would he know you? Would he put his arm around you? Or would he say, Hi, my name is Jesus. What is your name? That's the kind of relationship you need to have with him. He needs to know you in a relational way. All right? Very important. Um, the next one is, Do you call on the name of the Lord? Romans 10, 13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
So I would encourage you to call on the name of the Lord and get to know him relationally. Romans 12, 1, this is question number three. Have you given your life to him? When you give your life to him, you become a living sacrifice. You are on the altar burning, but you're alive walking around in a body. But you've given that body to somebody else, to the Lamb of God, to the perfect and eternal God. And so he does what he wants through your body because he's using your body to do things down here. Romans 12, 1 says, therefore I urge you. So this is not unimportant. It's very important. Brothers and sisters in the faith, in view of God's mercy, that means because God's mercy is so great, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. All right, the next one, number four, is do you believe on him? This is John 6, 29. And this word believe doesn't just mean believe. It means to adhere to, to trust in, to rely on, to adhere to him like super glue, to trust in him fully with every, your soul in and out, inside and out, and every part of you, and to rely on him, rely on him for the things that he says. So believing on him is what you're going to do if you want to follow him, okay? Believing is a big deal. This is your work to do if you decide to follow Christ. They came to him and they said, what must we do to do the works of God? See, they were wanting something to do. And Jesus said, your work is this, to believe in me. He's kind of saying, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Get to know me, follow me, rely on me. Let me run your life. Give me your problems, all of that, okay? This is very deep and very intense, but that's the beginning of what it means, and that's what you need to know about that. Um, number five is, can you say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, Jesus Christ is Lord. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, if you say Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All right? So you want to be able to do that. And then eventually, um, number six, is there any Holy Spirit fruit in your life? As you go along in your faith, there will start to be fruit. Well, there's actually fruit the moment you get saved because you have faith in your heart, and that is a seed of faithfulness. So that would be a little bit of fruit you have in order to be saved, God has given you the faith to believe, but Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And so you're going to want to ask for and look for the fruit of the Spirit in your life. This is not your fruit. You're not doing it. You're not making it happen. It happens without you even noticing it. That's how you know it's the Holy Spirit's fruit, because you say, I didn't do this. I'm not trying to be patient. I'm not trying to be gentle. I'm just living my life, walking in the yoke with the Lord, and all this fruit's coming out. It's because it's His fruit. It's not mine, and it's not yours. So it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against the, such things, there is no law. And then, this is a really important one. Number seven, does... Even more important than this up here, do you know him relationally? Even more important than that is, does he know you as his sheep? Does he know you? If he walked into a cocktail party and you were there and he said, hey, Mary, or hey, Joe, you're one of my sheep, he might do that if you don't know him well yet. He could do that. But he says in uh, John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. So he needs to know you. And you need to know him. 
So this is the reason that in Matthew 7, 23, he says to many of the people at the final judgment, depart from me, I never knew you. And so he's separating the sheep and the goats. The sheep go to glory. He says, enter your rest for the sheep. Those are the ones who belong to him, who did his will. The goats, he says, depart from me. That means you're getting thrown into the lake of fire, which he says he will do. And so depart from me is not what you want to hear. Those are the most terrifying words in all the universe for any human, especially a Christian, who thinks that they're good with the Lord. Okay, so he says, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. So you want to know him and you want to ask him to, that you want to tell him that you want a relationship with him. Okay, tell him and seek him, read his word and pray to him and start a relationship with him. You can't have a relationship with someone if you never communicate with them. See, so I'll, that's what I would encourage you to do. And again, I want to just remind everybody that Jesus Christ owns and rules heaven. He is its lamp and its light. And that is very important because if you think everybody goes to heaven or heaven is just some amorphous ethereal thing floating around somewhere above us, it's not the case. So I'm encouraging you to get to know the one who owns and rules heaven so that you can go there. All right, you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.